Hi, I'm Jason Mears and this is Public Cloud for VMware Users, the 101 introduction. So we're just going to be very uh, general and broad on our first video of the series and we're going to pose the question that if you asked 10 different people what cloud computing is, what would they say? And the chances are that they would come back with something like the following. That it's computing resources or services that are managed by a third party, that are accessed on demand from multiple locations over the internet on a pay-as-you-go basis. So we're very kind of generalistic there and not all of that is 100% accurate but it's a reasonable starting point. And if you do ask 10 people that, they'll probably also mention several other things. Almost definitely they'll mention Amazon Web Services They'll probably also mention Google Cloud Platform and possibly Microsoft Azure, uh, the three main public cloud providers. So obviously there are a lot more than that, but three are the largest, three of the largest and three of the most well-known cloud providers. Um, they'll probably also mention things like workloads and things like application portability and compatibility. However, we're not going to talk about any of those in this particular video. It's a little bit more complex than we're going to go into. But just know that when we've got a cloud, it's usually because we're running something called virtual machines, containers or Docker containers, and then something like functions or serverless. So these are the things that we actually do with the cloud computing. But as I say, we're not going to cover those in this video, just the basic concepts of what cloud computing is. So here are the things that we started with. And we'll start with computing resources or services. So these are essentially servers. They are a server with processing power and memory. So that's CPU and RAM that we pay for from a cloud provider. The next thing we're going to need is some kind of storage. Uh, lots of different types of storage available. Again, we're not going to cover it in this video. We're just going to talk about that in subsequent ones. But just say that storage is another commodity that can be bought from a cloud computing provider. And we're also going to need some kind of network to connect these together or to allow end users to access the services on them. And then some kind of security and identity management um, to secure the resources that we've actually procured. So that would be the first bit. That's the computing resources and services. The managed by a third party is an assumption that it's somebody else's responsibility to install patches and updates to perform the initial configuration of the software and get it uh, working in a basic state, to do any kind of integration, such as integration with a, a monitoring tool or a backup tool or anything else that the user would expect to have been configured beforehand, and then an expectation that there's some kind of control panel or method of accessing or using the service. We'd also assume that we would um, have access on demand, that we're able to add something whenever we want, to start or stop something whenever we want and delete something whenever we want on the premise that we're only going to pay for the things that we've actually used or created. The multiple locations one is an interesting one because most cloud providers carve the world up into something um, at a top level that they call regions. So almost every cloud provider will have a concept of a region which is carved up geographically and inside those regions they use something called zones or availability zones. And a zone or an availability zone will usually have one or more data centers grouped together um, for the purposes of providing this cloud computing in a particular um, region or zone. And those will be scattered usually around the world in lots of different locations. Most providers will have at least something near most of companies or organizations. And when you set up cloud computing, you'll pick which um, region and which zone you want to consume that resource in. There's also an assumption that if you're going to consume a resource, you're going to do it over the internet. So not always correct, but the, the, there is, again, that's how most people start. Sometimes if you're using cloud computing um, at a, in, you know, a great deal or in a more corporate or enterprise or professional level, you might want a more robust connection to the cloud uh, computing provider. And different cloud computing providers have different names for these. Amazon Web Services call the um, high speed, highly reliable, high bandwidth connection a direct connect. Google Cloud Platform call those a cloud connect. 
and Azure call those an express route. So these are the dedicated high speed, high bandwidth, high re highly reliable lines straight into the cloud provider's data center. However, if you don't, uh, if you're just starting out or you don't need one of those, it's perfectly acceptable to start with just a standard internet connection. And for some people that will be enough. Um, the whole idea of doing this is that we want to do it on a pay as you go basis. So that's how most people will start. Um, they'll just literally pay as they go. They'll start with a small amount of resource and just pay for what they use. Uh, there's no contract as such in there. There's no commitment. Um, what then kicks in is usually something like an overall use discount or a sustained use discount. So if I start on pay as you go and I consume a lot of a service or I have a sustained use of a service, many cloud providers will give you a discount for the fact that you've used uh, more of that or a sustained use of that. But if you want to make your cloud computing even cheaper or, or lower cost, there's something you can do called a reserved instance where you guarantee to buy or consume an amount of cloud computing. And in return for that, the cloud provider gives you a, a better discount or a better price on the cloud computing that you're using. So pay as you go and overall discounts, you don't have to tell the provider how much you're going to use, you use as little or as much as you want, but reserved instances is a bit more involved where you actually have a, an agreement with the cloud provider about a minimum amount of, of resource that you're going to consume for them over a period of time. And then there's an additional one called spot instances where you literally take spot pricing um, when the price drops, you use cloud computing resources. So there are some caveats on this, and that is that this needs to be a job that can be done in a batch or can be restarted. So the idea is that if you've got a job that needs to be done by a certain date, but you don't actually care when it's done, just that it gets done, you can you can bundle this job up and you can say, I want to put this on a spot instance, and when the cost drops before below a specific amount, then run my job and charge me accordingly. So it's a way of getting the best possible price if you don't care when the job or the batch uh, is done and that's called a spot instance or spot pricing but whichever method you choose the most likely uh, thing is that you're going to have a credit card already set up in your billing account and at the end of the month it'll all be added up and it'll all be deducted from your credit card at the end of the month so they were the things we said we we're going to cover at the start of the video uh, but it's quite common in the industry to have something called a, an elevator pitch or a 30 second pitch. The idea being, if somebody asks you what is cloud computing, you've got a, a short snappy sentence or a short snappy description of what it means. As, and again, quite often called an elevator pitch as if somebody's just asked you as you've just got in the elevator or just got in the lift. And I would say, one thing you could say is that cloud computing is computing resources or services that are managed by a third party and accessed on demand from multiple locations over the internet on a pay-as-you-go or reserved basis. So that's the um, that's the end of the video and a, and a quick summary of hopefully what you now understand cloud computing to be. So in the next video um, we're going to do um, one or two which will be a bit more detail around computing resources and services. So thank you very much for your time and I hope you found that useful.